What I'm going to discuss now is demonstrate the capabilities that Autodesk Inventor has to work with uh, data that comes from outside of Autodesk. Autodesk Inventor makes it very easy for us to work with different types of file formats. For example, we have the capability of opening up things like DXF data, CATIA files, IDF files, IGIS files, JT files, Parasol files in a variety of formats, ProEngineer part and assembly documentation, ProEngineer granite files, ProEngineer neutral file formats, Rhino files, SAT files, STEP files, SOLIDWORKS part and assembly documentation, as well the ability to open up Unigraphics part and assembly information directly inside of Autodesk Inventor. The conversion tools or the, the translation tools that are built into Autodesk Inventor create a strong return on investment just from buying the core version of Autodesk Inventor, giving us the capability to open up and use a variety of different types of data. For example, CATIA files, in order to open these inside of a tool like SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS, even though they're a sister company of CATIA itself, both owned by Dassault, they cannot open up CATIA files natively inside the SOLIDWORKS interface. You're going to have to buy a translator that costs ten to twenty thousand dollars just to get an effective open of this different data. And Autodesk Inventor is providing this for you out of the core package of Inventor. So once we have this data available for us to open, we have a variety of different file formats that we're going to be able to open solid surface data, wire files. If we're working with assembly documentation, we can open this as a multi-solid uh, component. We can also work with com the single composite feature when working with these different assembly uh, these different assembly files that we're opening. If we actually go in and open up this documentation that comes from SOLIDWORKS, for example, it's going to ask us, do we want to recognize the features that are built on this component? Let's go ahead and say yes. If we go in here, it's going to bring us directly into the feature recognition interface. This is going to allow us to open um, or recognize each feature by feature within this existing model here. Or we can use the automatic feature recognition tool. Maybe we don't want to recognize fillets, so we're going to go ahead and uncheck that geometry to not recognize those components within the assembly model or within the part model that we're working with. Now, maybe we want to, after the fact, go in and recognize a specific fillet on the geometry. We're going to be able to go right in and recognize that fillet. Notice it takes the fillet out so that we're not wasting time forgetting which components were already recognized. They're listed over on the left-hand side. Now what we want to do is go ahead and rebuild those features inside of Autodesk Inventor. This is going to give us the capability to very quickly go back into the modeling interface and work with the actual features that were generated inside of SOLIDWORKS. We can go in and edit these features on the fly. So I can go in here and say, maybe I want to change that fillet radius from 16.1 to 10. Very quickly I can do that and make the updates within the Autodesk Inventor interface natively, making it very easy for me to be able to work with this geometry within Autodesk Inventor even though it was built in an outside CAD tool. Let's go ahead and take a look at some further functionality within Autodesk Inventor, an additional flexibility that the tool gives us. Let's say we don't want to recognize the features on this component when we work with this geometry. Whether we do or we don't recognize those features, you can see here we have a base component. We're now working with just a dumb, solid model. Uh, we don't have any uh, feature-based tools or features within the geometry that, we're, that we have open on this model. But regardless of that, we can go in to the actual component that we're working with here, and we can start to make modifications to it. For example, I can go in here and start to delete specific fillets on the geometry. So I have the capability of deleting features even though I don't have them in my model tree. I can also do things like move face geometry. So I can start to make modifications to the component and I can also go in and select specific faces that I want to go ahead and pull out. Maybe I want to pull that off or stretch this component off in in you know, in one direction by one inch, or maybe I want to go ahead and pull this off um, two inches. I have the capability of working with this geometry and, and building this geometry on the fly after working with these components. I can continue deleting other features that I've affected on the geometry, making it very easily, giving me a lot of potential when working with this so-called dumb solid geometry. It's no longer dumb solid geometry when we're working with this inside of Autodesk Inventor. These are huge competitive advantages when using Autodesk Inventor. These are tools that our competitors just don't offer, and Autodesk Inventor makes this very easy to do. 